I believe that wealth generation needs a three-pronged approach when you actually looking at building wealth. And firstly, you want to look at investing and protection, where you are building wealth with investing and protecting your cash flow with protection and risk products. Then you're going to look at taxes uh, with a focus on keeping more of what you earn. And the thing that we never look at is inflation. And inflation is the silent and invisible tax and uh, we don't pay enough attention to it as investors. So today we're kicking off uh, a four-part series on uh, attempting to understand inflation and how it affects us in our wealth building journey. Welcome to the Wealth Nation podcast, a podcast for every mother, daughter, grandmother, sister, and wife, and the men who are smart enough to tune in. The Wealth Nation podcast brings you all you need to know about investments, business, property investments, personal finance, and all around financial wellness. Here is your host, Yolanda Rose. Hey, this is Yolanda and welcome to another episode of the Wealth Nation podcast. I'm a wealth advisor and the director of Solomon Wealth Management. And it is my goal on this podcast and any other uh, content that I put out on social media is to help you manage your money well, live abundantly and build generational wealth. So thanks for joining me today. And if you're new here, please subscribe to this podcast. And if there's something that you would like me to cover in uh, my content or on this podcast, mail me. It's Yolanda at financiallyfabulousfemales.com. The Wealth Nation podcast is brought to you by Solomon Wealth Management. Solomon Wealth Management is an innovative team of wealth managers that addresses the entirety of your life, your family, your business, your future, one facet at a time. We use our skill and expertise to the consideration of what you have accumulated and how best to administer it through life's changes. From financial counsel on managing your wealth to careful contemplation of how to transfer it to future generations, it's your vision for your future combined with our skill and expertise to help you reach financial excellence. So if you want to sit with us one-on-one, go to www.solomonwealth.com co.za click on the get started by button and uh, we could be chatting one on one so today we're taking a bite into inflation and attempting to understand inflation and we're talking about the effects of inflation that investors need to know about and like i said we don't pay enough attention to this and it's something that needs equal amounts of attention uh as we put into learning about investments, as we put into learning taxes. But I often feel that we neglect this, especially when I... So when I talk to clients and I ask them, how much do you think you'll need for retirement? And they're happy with a million or two million. But depending on uh, inflation at the time they're going to retire, that one million, two million is not going to cut it. And we need to start considering inflation in, in our entire wealth building journey equally as much as we do with investing. So what is inflation? It's basically an economic term describing the increase of goods and services for a period. And uh, to some, inflation signifies a a struggling economy. And we see now in South Africa, inflation is at 4.5%. For me, it basically tells me that uh, the demand for goods and services is higher. And we'll find that the Reserve Bank, they'll take steps maybe in next year sometime to start pulling back on this inflation. This week, Discovery announced that uh, they're increasing uh, the medical aid uh, rates due to inflation, and they've pegged uh, health inflation at around 7.9%, and and they've justified that with that increase on our medical aid premiums. So although we have this inflation rate consumer price index of uh, 45 we have various segments within that that are higher than the average. Like we see health at 7.9, education is like an 8%, and we need to start factoring all of this in. So the thing that you got to know about inflation is that it erodes your purchasing power. And that's the first effect of inflation. It decreases the purchasing power of the rand due to the increase in goods and services in the country. And if we look at things like loaf of bread, that we're all purchasing. No matter how much money you have or don't have, we're all purchasing bread. Ten years ago, how much was it? 
compared to now. Okay, so so that that's inflation. A loaf of bread is still a loaf of bread, whether it's 700 or 750 grams. The prices are increasing. The prices are going up. So such a price change could only result from a surge in the popularity of bread, you know, supply and demand and things like that. So in those scenarios, the price of bread would arise, but the rest of the economy should be unaffected. However, that's not the case. And we know that with inflation, the price of of everything increases. So inflation requires the prices to rise across a whole basket of goods and services, such as uh, the ones that comprise of the common measures uh, that we all purchase in the country. So when the prices of the goods that are non-discretionary and impossible to substitute, things like fuel, uh, food, when they rise, they can affect inflation all by themselves. And for this reason, economists often um, take out food and fuel only to look at the core inflation, which is less volatile um, with the price changes. Another thing that inflation does is that encourages spending. And this is a predictable response to The diminishing buying power is to buy now rather than later. Cash will only lose its value, so it's better to get your shopping out of the way and stock up on the things that you probably won't lose value. So for consumers, it means topping up the petrol tank, um, topping up on goods. For example, especially if you buy in bulk, you know, if you're a macro shopper, there are things that you can buy and keep for over duration of 12 plus months, rice, sugar, the canned goods. Um, in some cases, if you're like me, you're buying uh, things like uh, the kids' clothing a size bigger to try and uh, get some sort of advantage on inflation. But for businesses, it means making capital investments. And that's under different circumstances because it might put off until might be put off until later. So many investors, myself included, I buy gold and precious metals when inflation takes is is taking off. So over the long term, equities is seen to be uh, a hedge against inflation. And we talk about equities, we're talking about aggressive investments, such as shareholding in companies. And uh, when we do put out uh, an investment for portfolio for you, um, in that sort of investment wrapper, we'll have um, a high percentage in 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 shares and then maybe a little lesser segment in property, lesser in cash, uh, some in bonds, depending on your risk level. But a, a good hedge for inflation is the shareholding, the equity holding. A major effect of inflation is also the cost of borrowing will rise. Now, we don't see it currently in very unique times. The pandemic is sort of winding up. And we'll find pretty soon the Reserve Bank will increase the rate of borrowing. So if interest rates are low, companies and individuals can borrow cheaply to start a business, to buy some property, um, to get an educational loan, to expand their skills, or even buy a, a fancy car or something like that. And we see, we see that happening currently. A lot of people are getting into a lot of bad debt when they should be using this time to get into good debt. So low rates encourages encourages spending and investing, which generally stokes the turn in inflation. But by rising the interest rates, the Reserve Bank can put a damper on the spending because the interest rates are higher, less people are inclined to, to take out these loans to spend. Because those monthly payments on whatever it is they're buying becomes a little bit higher. So it's better to put some money in the bank where you can earn some interest when when that, that does happen. If those interest rates are higher than inflation, of course. So when there's not enough cash being circulated, money becomes scarce. And that scarcity increases its value. Although as a rule, the Reserve Bank doesn't want money to literally become a more valuable. They fear outright deflation nearly as much as they do hyperinflation, where the interest, where inflation is just sky high. So it's important for the Reserve Bank to find a balance between inflation and interest rates. So the thing that they can play with is the interest rates, and they'll target either high or low. 
to try and target um, the, the the target range of inflation rate. And in South Africa, they're looking at more uh, uh, around uh, four to six percent, and and we're in the middle now, at around uh, four and a half five percent. But we see that the Reserve uh, Bank director has mentioned that. Uh, they're planning to target 3%. Due to the interest rate being low, inflation is a little bit high, and because interest rates are low, uh, spending is stimulated. And that would force the Reserve Bank to push up interest rates. Uh, inflation also discourages saving, and we see a lot of people not doing the whole cash deposits and, and holding money in the bank. They're either spending it, and hopefully smart people like you are investing it, because the purchasing power of the that currency of the rand is depreciating uh, over time so those are the major effects of inflation that we need to consider and this is just part one in our series we're going to be speaking about uh, a lot of fun stuff how we can profit during inflation uh, the things that we should be investing in during inflation and um uh, why debt is not a bad thing in relation to inflation. So all of that coming up in the next couple of weeks. That's it for me on this episode of the Wealth Nation podcast. I'll chat to you soon. Thanks for tuning in. Make sure to visit our website at www.financiallyfabulousfemales.com and sign up for our free investment masterclass.